can these V30 cards hold up on the Black Magic Pocket? Or do we need like like a V60 card? Or like uh like like a V90 card? Or like like a computer? I I I don't know, I but I did some tests to find out, so uh yeah, let's see. With the new 6.2 update with Black Magic, we are, we now have BRAW, which if you haven't been following, is a new file format that is a .mov file that still retains all the qualities of a uh, of a raw file, like a DNG file. So you can still control ISO and white balance and stuff like that, and you have a lot more image information, just just like a raw video file. Now there's uncompressed formats of it, which on the Black Magic is yeah Q0 constant quality and 3.1. Those are the high end ones, and then we also have. Um, higher compressed ones, 12.1, 8.1, 5.1, and these are all still really good file formats, but they have very small um, data transfer rates, megabyte rates per second. So theoretically, we should be able to use small cards like this. This is the SanDisk Extreme Pro, uh, 95 megabyte a second card. This is the one I used on my first Blackmagic Pocket, and I didn't think I could use it for much more than, you know, the HD 1920 by 1080 files that were, uh, on the new pocket, but with these smaller file formats, we should be able to use this now. So I went out and did some tests. I wanted to test out some of the cheaper cards that are more popular and just kind of see how they hold up. I tested two V60 cards and I tested two V30 cards. Now the V30 cards, I'll just get right into it, are the same, are pretty much the same card. They're the SanDisk Extreme Pros. They should be able to hold according to their rates about uh, 95 megabytes a second, which should pretty much be everything uh, 5.1 be raw and below. This this one is the 95 megabyte a second one, and this one is their newer um, 170 megabyte a second card. Now here's the thing, these are the same card. Um, the 170 megabyte thing is actually just a read speed, not write speed. So these cards actually write at about the same. But at the same time, it's not like a ripoff or anything because, as it turns out, they cost the same. In fact, <laughs> the 95 megabyte card, if you get the 64 gig version, currently is a little bit more expensive than the 170 megabyte. Yeah, I think it's just because this is the new one they're making and so there's more of them available. Price on these aren't too bad. $40 for 128 gigs and uh, $80 for 256 gig. So that's going to give you quite a bit of time recording in BRAW and I'll go through the times in a little bit here. Um, the other two cards I did, well the one is the very popular Lexar 1000X and I can't show you that. I'll just like right here, yeah, because it's actually recording this in the GH5 right now. The other one is this hot ticket thing off of uh, Amazon. It's uh, the Amplin uh, Duradata V60 190X card that goes at 285 megabytes a second. It's supposed to be, do everything pretty much that a V90 card can do. It's supposed to be wonderful. And it costs $130 for the 128 gig, so about a dollar a gig there. But that's still about half the price of a V90 card. So if this can do everything on the Black Magic, this could be really good. A lot of people have been asking about, um, with these new file formats, exactly how much time you get recording with this media since we have smaller file sizes. And I figured I'd go over some of that as well here. Um, in 12 to 1 compression, which is the most compressed version of BRAW, it's still a very good uh, version of it. Um, on a 128 gig card, which is where I recommend uh, starting out, and you'll, you'll kind of know why once I go through the, these times. Uh, at 30 frames a second, you get 60 minutes. At 24 frames a second, you're going to get 71 minutes. That's really good. In 8 to 1 compression, you are going to get, um, at 30 frames a second, you're going to get 40 minutes of record time. At 24 frames a second, you are going to get 52 minutes of record time. So yet again, at 8 to 1 compression, that's really good. And 8 to 1 compression and 12 to 1 compression are, are both really good. They're very comparable. At 5 to 1 compression, you're going to get 32 minutes at 24 frames a second, and you're going to get 24 minutes at uh, 30 frames a second. Now, remember that with BRAW, 
3.1 and Q0, Blackmagic recommends to only be used with things like uh, special effects work, compositing work, green screen stuff. And with most feature work, um, they said 5 to 1 is going to be your standard, and they said 8 to 1 and 12 to 1 are actually good as well. And th that it opens up the possibility for things like weddings and documentary work, so you can kind of shoot everything in RAW. So most of the time you're just going to be 5 to 1 or lower, and so that's pretty much what what you need to be focused on. Now, if by chance you do need three to one or Q0, it's not really a big deal at all. Um, you can still use the, the SSDs like the Samsung T5 500 gig SSD that I use. That can handle all the file formats and all the frame rates, and it's only $100, but it is external on your camera. On my small rig here, I just mount it right there, and it plugs in right here to the side. It's a little inconvenient to have, but, but not really that bad. And so, I mean, if you need it and you still want to keep things on the cheap, I just recommend doing that. And if you're just shooting regular uh, footage, it, it's okay to use just these SD cards that can shoot 5 to 1 or lower. So with these cards, the main thing that you want to look into is can they shoot at these compressions at 30 frames a second or... Uh, lower because most of our professional work is going to be NTSC, which is 30 frames a second, 29.97, or uh, movie work, which is 24 frames a second, or like with Netflix, you know, 23.98. And so that's pretty much where you want to be with these cards. The results are pretty surprising, actually. Um, actually, they're, they're really surprising and they kind of don't make sense. But uh, the Sandisk cards, the 170 and this 95 one, where's the 170, right here, these guys, those are going to do, um, those do B-Rot 5 to 1 compression, 8 to 1 compression, and this is 30 frames or lower, and 12 to 1 compression, and they can shoot in slow motion, but only at the 12 to 1 compression, so you get 60 frames at 12 to 1, and 30 frames at all those other ones, so they can't shoot Q0, and they can't shoot 3 to 1, I got drop frames when I tested those out. Um, so those held up really good. That means you can use it for pretty much all of the general work that you're going to do, like, on a film. So I was curious about, you know, how these V60 cards would hold up, because theoretically they should be able to... At the Lexar 1000X is 150 megabytes a second, and the, uh, and the Amplin's 285 megabytes a second, so theoretically these should be able to hold everything that B-Raw can do. And the results are actually really disappointing. In fact, it's this is going to be kind of crazy, but that Lexar 1000X performs worse than these SanDisks. I mean, it's okay. You can shoot 5 to 1, 8 to 1, and 12 to 1 at 30 frames a second or lower, but in slow motion, 60 frames a second, it actually can't shoot at any of those file rates. You get drop frames even at 12 to 1. So at $20, uh, roughly a card more, the 128 one currently is sixty dollars, and the uh, two hundred and fifty-six megabyte version of it is a hundred dollars right now on Adorama and, and Amazon. You know, it's more expensive than the Sandisks, and it performs worse. So, yeah, so definitely stick with the Sandisks on that. Save yourself some money, and it works better. The Amplin card actually was the one I was most curious about, and at 285 megabytes a second, it should be able to handle everything. But it's not hitting anywhere near that in write speed on cards. It must be hitting just a little bit above 100 megabytes a second, the way it's reacting. The Amplin card, just so you know, cannot work on 3 to 1 compression or Q0 compression. It can work in 5 to 1, 8 to 1, and 12 to 1 at 30 frames a second or lower, just like the SanDisk cards, it can shoot at 12 to 1 compression at 60 frames a second. And the only thing it can do better than the SanDisk cards is it can shoot at 8 to 1 at 60 frames a second. That is literally the only difference between this card and this card. This card is $130 for 128 gigs. And this card is uh, $40 for 128 gigs. That's three times the price, and it can just do 8 to 1 compression at 60 frames a second. And frankly, the difference between 8 to 1 and 12 to 1 compression is pretty minor, and you're not going to find much of a difference there. There's Honestly, there's no reason to buy that V60 card. Um, so the results are a little disappointing here. I was hoping to find a V60 card that can kind of handle everything that was at like half the price, and you could film everything with Blackmagic Raw, and I was really looking forward to that. 
but it didn't happen. But the good news is we don't need that. And the SanDisk cards at $40 can do pretty much everything that you need. You can film any movie you want with it. You could film, you know, weddings, all your professional work in B-Raw with it. They still handle ProRes pretty well. I, you can pretty much shoot everything except HQ with these cards. So, like, they're going to they're gonna handle everything you need, which is making this Blackmagic Pocket still just a really good go-to camera that's very, very affordable. We're talking just a fraction of the cost of of uh, CFast 2 cards and that a lot of these bigger cameras are using and well just a lot of these cameras were using in general um, just a few months ago and so it's nice that things are becoming a lot more affordable and it's still a really exciting time for filmmakers and people just wanting to start out and are perhaps a little intimidated on how much they need to invest in and camera equipment and everything. I mean, now that you can get a camera and great editing software for $1,300 and memory cards at like $40 a piece on them and batteries, uh, you know, you can find Wasabi ones for about 15 bucks a piece. You know, that's making it so for under $2,000, you can have a really high performance, uh, a really high performance camera that's, you know, comparable to what you were, images you were getting out of red cameras and and things like that. It's just amazing what you can get out of some of these cheaper cameras now and with them being even more affordable with things like these these cards, you know, it's, it's really changing it for a lot of people and I think that's the reason why I started doing these YouTube videos here is because of uh, wanting to encourage people like me or you know, I mean, you don't have to be exactly like me, but to encourage people to be going out there and doing, uh, and, 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 and making more movies and making more things that, you know, you're excited to make more personal projects. Final note, I know there's going to be some complaints about saying, well, it's not a file format that we're ready to be, uh, editing with with everything and that ProRes is still the way to go and actually I agree with that I wouldn't be using B-Raw right now with anything other than um kind of testing stuff out while we're working quirks out be because DaVinci is kind of the only thing that like works with it so unless you're really good at DaVinci and you feel confident in there I wouldn't recommend doing B-Raw with anything other than w with anything other than kind of like testing purposes I'd still be shooting ProRes and most everything that you're doing right now I get it but it's still important to be doing these videos in the future, you know, ProRes RAW, uh, Blackmagic RAW, all, all these all these new formats that are coming out, they're going to be kind of where stuff's heading. And so it's important for us to be testing things out kind of out the gate and figuring out things that don't work and making things, you know, finding solutions. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed some of the information. I'm sorry I, I ramble a little bit and sorry I'm a, I'm a nervous guy. I'm still getting used to this YouTube stuff, but... uh. Thank you for watching. I just wanted to sincerely uh, thank you for sitting through to the end here. And I want to thank everyone for watching some of my previous videos. There's been lots of nice comments and everything. And, you know, guys, that really means a lot to me. Um, I really appreciate the kindness of everyone and what they've all been saying. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next week. Please consider subscribing if you like my videos. Um, I, I'll, I appreciate it a lot. I keep saying the same thing, but, yeah. Thank you so much, and uh, hope to see you back here next week. What am I even, what did I even write? I should just say it like a normal person. Whoa. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing.